Hi guys, welcome back. So we are still busy with some finance, which is growth and decay. The first segment, we've actually looked at what it means to have compound decay. Now we're going to look at timelines. Timelines are a tool that actually assists us to see when somebody is making maybe multiple deposits into their account, or they making multiple withdrawals, or they then having a change in, in interest. Because you know that at times when it comes to our country, there will be at times where interest is changed because of the economy at the time. So when that happens on your investment, we normally use a timeline just to try and see what exactly is it that you will have and project something that will happen maybe after five years of your investment or after 10 years of investment. It might not be accurate all the time, but remember if you do your research right, then definitely it might work for you. So let's look at what timelines are all about. Now with timelines, it, it talks about the time value of money. Time value of money is all about how do you get your interest? How often do you get your interest? What does your interest change to? How much are you adding after a certain duration of time? How much are you taking out of that particular account? So that's what the time value of money is all about. Now, we normally use the symbols T0, T1, T2, etc., like that to represent the, 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 the point at which we are on, on the timeline. So T0 will be when the investment is starting. T1 will be after a year the investment has been there. T3 will then be after three years. T4, T10, like that. So those will then be our terms that we normally use or symbols that we use. Now when compound interest is used, the money, it can always be moved forward and backwards on a timeline depending on what the interest is all about. And also depending on whether you are actually now taking out money or putting in money. But what this means specifically is that when you're moving forward, you n times, you multiply by 1 plus i to the exponent of f and the n must now be a positive, right? Because remember we said you times by the power of that. But if you're moving backwards, it will then be a minor, sorry. So remember that on a number line, guys, going to the left, it's always a minus. Going to the right, it's a plus. So it means when I'm moving forward, I'm adding. And I'm moving backward, I'm subtracting. Hence the plus and the minus. Now, let's just try and consider a comparison between a thousand rand and a thousand two hundred rands in two years' time at 10% interest rate that is effective. Now, if we were to use a, a number line for this, at T0, you can see that the amount is actually uh, 1,000 that the person is putting in. At T1, there is nothing that is happening. They're still gaining interest. And then at T2, the amount now became 1,200. So we need to look at what exactly does this mean. Now let's just look at this. At T2, you can see that if I wanted to calculate what happens to my 1,000 rand for two years, I would then use the compound interest formula, right? So which is P into 1 plus i to the exponent of n. Remember, this is about growth, right, and not uh, dk. So my p there will be a thousand rand into one plus. Then my interest, they said, is 10%. So that's actually going to be 0, 0,1. And this will be to the exponent of two years. Then we want to see what will happen at that point. So. Remember what did we say? If you're moving forward, you multiply by 1 plus i to the exponent of a positive n. Now, we, if you go back to the calculator now, this will be 1,000 into 1, 1 plus 0, 0,1, 1, 
and this will be to the exponent of 2. And then this, you can see that it's 8,210 uh, rands, right? So it's not necessarily that it's going to be just strictly 1,200. So that's the amount that you actually going to have. So you can see it's slightly still closer to that. And that, that is what is happening at that point. So the goal here is to move forward. But now at T0, at T0 it means we are now moving backward, right? And if we are moving backward, we then need to actually use the very same formula that we have, 1 plus i to the exponent of now negative n instead of a positive n. And then from there, you can then substitute what you have. So let's just see what will happen on the calculator if I do that. So that will be a negative there. And then you can see that it was actually worth eight, 826 rands, right? So if I wanted to move backwards in terms of my, me having the, the thousand rand. Two years back, the thousand rand was actually worth 826 rands and 45 cents. So that's what we are talking about when we are, mo when we are talking about moving backwards and moving forward on a timeline. Now, we have what we call a change in interest rate as well. An interest rate, when it changes on a number line, we normally show that using something like a wobble and writing what the interest rate is there. That whole point is to show you what the interest was and what did it change to and what did it become continuously so. So that's the big idea here, to look at how did our interest change as you were moving forward or as you were moving backward with your investment. Now, with this question, we have a guy, Sibusis, Right, Sibusiso then deposits 15,000 into his bank account and leaves it in the account for five years, right? So Sibusiso deposits that and leaves it for five years. But for the first three years, the interest is actually given to him as 8% per annum compounded monthly, right? That's for the first three years. So from T0 to T3, that's what Sibusiso is getting. But thereafter, meaning for the remainder of the investment, now Sibusiso will then get 9% per annum compounded quarterly, so 1% more, but at a different compounding period. How much money will then Sibusiso have in his account at the end of five years? So let's look at a number line for this. So you can see, guys. Remember that we said n will be the number of times the person is getting interest. So between T0 and T3, Sibusiso is getting interest 36 times, so it's for 36 months. And the interest that he is getting is 0 0,08 over 12. And then for the remainder of the investment, he's actually getting the interest for eight quarters, because remember in two years, I have eight quarters, and the interest he's getting is 0 0,09 over four. And therefore, if we wanted to calculate for this, right, I will say this is A is equals to, firstly, I would want to find how much interest did Sibusiso get for the first three years, right? So that is one plus I to the exponent of N. And therefore, this will then give me, remember that the amount that Sibusiso invested was 15,000, one plus, the I is actually 8%. So the I is 8%, which is 0 0,08. And this was for, on a monthly basis, and this was to the exponent of 36. And then you find what that amount is. That's the first calculation. Right, so let's just perform that calculation quickly. So, Sbusiso invested 15,000 and he was gaining an interest of 8%, 08 over for 12 months in every year. 
and this was to the exponent of 36. So you can see that now his investment is now worth 19,053 uh, uh, rands and 56 cents, right? So this will be 19,000 and 53 rands and 56 cents, right? Although I'm rounding off here, that's not what you're supposed to do. Remember that. You need to leave it as is. But remember, I have it on the calculator, so I'm going to still use it from a, a calculator point of view. So for the whole now duration, which is for the last two years, and for the last two years, that's how much Sibosiso will have at the end of the five years. It will be the principal amount, which will now be the A3. So that's what he got for the three years into one plus at the changed interest, which is 0 0.09 over four. Why? Because this is now a compounded quarterly, right? And this is to the exponent of, um, remember it was for two years, so that means it's eight. So that's what we will have there. And then if I go back to my calculator, remember that's still my answer. So I'm just gonna say answer open bracket, one plus 0 0.09 over the four, and this will be raised to an exponent of eight. And then, you see, so at the end of the duration, Sibosiso will have that amount. But now let me show you something that's interesting that you can do here. Instead of doing it in bits and pieces like this, you can just straight up go to and say 15,000 and then for the first three years, we know that the interest was 8% compounded monthly, and this was for the first three years, right? But this whole amount was reinvested because he left it in the bank. And this was reinvested at now at an interest of 9% over four because it was compounded quarterly, and this was for the last two years, right? Voila, it gives us the very same answer. You can see, easy peasy, lemon squeeze. So you can just do one long calculation. Why? Because you're moving forward, or you can do it in bits and pieces, depending on your comfortability there. Now, we have what we also call multiple payments and withdrawals. So here we have Cheryl, who has a bank uh, that offers her 3% per annum compounded monthly, right? So she's getting 3% per annum compounded monthly on her savings account. She, open, she opens the account with a deposit of 12,000. And then a year later, she decides, no, now I have an extra amount in my purse. Let me just go and deposit an extra 5,000. Another two years later, she decides to also do what? to withdraw now 8,000 because maybe there is now an emergency that came up. So she just needs to take out that amount. So you can see that for the first investment that she made, she deposited 12,000. And then a year later, she decided to say, I'm going to deposit um, 5,000, right? And then two years later, she decides again to do what? To say, no, let me now withdraw this. It might be an emergency that came up or maybe she saw something that she would like to get or she has to maybe uh, put up a deposit for something that she's trying to buy. Now, we want to know how much money she will actually be, have in her account after five years, right? So if we look at this from a number line perspective, you see what is happening here. So for the first year, the amount was there, which was 12,000. And then at the end of the first year, she decided to deposit the 5,000. And then for the two years now of leaving all the money that she deposited, which was gaining the, very, uh, the interest that has changed now to the other interest rate that she actually got, but at the very same rate, which is the 3%, right, compounded 
in a month. So in this instance, it means that the interest did not really change, but what changed is the withdrawal now. She decides to withdraw. The reason for the minus there is to show that she actually withdrew from her account, and then she leaves the balance. So for this duration, the interest was being earned, and then here she took out money and then the balance that was there was left for the remainder of the investment for it to gain some interest there. So if we do a calculation for this, we will then say that this is actually going to be the 12,000, right? The 12,000 gained interest for the whole duration of the investment until T3 before she actually uh, withdraws this much, right? So. I will then calculate this for the three years at, an, at a rate of 3%. 0, 3 over 12. So this is for the first three years, it was that, right? And then I will add how much the 5,000, which actually gained interest for two years before she withdrew. So that will be for the 5,000 into one plus the interest is still 0, 0,03 over 12, but now this is for um, two years, meaning it's going to be 24, right? And then from whatever we get there, we're going to subtract the 8,000. So let's quickly do the calculation. This will be 12,000 into one plus. The interest there is 0, 0,03 over 12, to the exponent of 36, right? And then we add the other amount that gained interest for two years now. This gained interest for two years, one plus, same, 0, 0,03 divided by 12, and it was to the exponent of 24 because it's for two years. And that's how much she then had after three years. She then decided to do what? To withdraw the 8,000. And that's what she was left with. What happened to this? This gained interest for the last two years and the interest was still the same. So I'm just going to say answer, open the bracket one plus um, the fraction 0, 0,03 divided by the 12, because it's still compounded uh, monthly, and this is raised to the exponent of 24 months, because it's for the remainder. And then, that's what the total investment account amount was at the end of the duration. So, guys, this is the big idea here. The big idea is to look at what is happening. Are you withdrawing? Are you depositing? Or are you changing interest, maybe after a certain number of years with your investment, you go back to your bank and say, guys, I've been a very loyal customer. Can we now negotiate what is happening here? Or maybe another financial year that takes place, you know that banks normally review their financial status, and then they say, okay, now we're in we increasing the interest or we're decreasing the interest. So that's what we're looking at. And when you have that, you really need to be able to then solve that using what we call a, num a timeline. And the timeline is really, really powerful, especially if there is a multiple deposits, change in interest, or multiple withdrawals that the person is making. Remember that we use T0, T1, T2, T3, T20 to represent the time in terms of where we are at that point. So the number, T0 will always mean the start of the investment. And then you saw that at times we use a plus and a minus when we show the amount that we have. So at times when it's a minus, it means it's going out. When it's a plus, it's going in. Or it can be an arrow going in or an arrow going out. They both mean one and the same thing. So that's all you need to look at. Guys, we're going to go to a quick ad break, and I'll be back with some more. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.